Hey, I'm Brett. And I'm Hunter. And today we're going to show you guys how to decimate models in Blender to bring into Gravity Sketch. You may need to decimate a file if it's relatively heavy. For example, an engineering package or a math model of a vehicle. The lighter you're able to make these models, the better they'll run in headset, especially untethered headsets. We'll start off here in a default scene in Blender 4.0.2. Um, first, let's select all and delete. Head to File, Import, OBJ. Head to Desktop, and then bring in this OBJ file. I'm also going to split by group. So you'll notice here in the outliner that our model imported, but it's not visible in the sketch. So let's change our camera settings so it is visible. I'm going to press N to open up the side panel, head over to view, change the clip start to 10, and then add two more zeros here to the end. Now, if I focus on our model, it's going to be visible. So next thing I want to do, I want to make sure that my uh, statistics are showing to see like the size of my model. So if I go over to gizmos, or excuse me, go over to overlays, I can turn on statistics. So we can see here that there is approximately 1.4 million faces in this entire model. Uh, Gravity Sketch is going to have perfect performance on a standalone headset with around 500,000 polygons. So we're going to try to decimate this to around that level. So first thing you want to do is select any part of your model, head over to your modifiers, which is going to be this wrench icon, click on add modifier, go to generate, and then head down to decimate. Now, if I were to move this ratio down, you'll see that eventually the fidelity is going to change. Just going to get like slightly choppier. So we just want to find the right balance between decimating as much as possible, but keeping like a good visual quality. Um, practicing this beforehand, I think something like 0.2 is going to be good. Now, you'll also notice that that decimation modifier was only applied to this one surface, not the rest of the model. So what we can do to make sure that we link it to everything is make sure the active object is the one with the modifier. Now click A to select everything, and then Control L to copy the modifiers to the rest of the model. And now you'll see that this is applied to everything. Now, part of the reason why I separated everything at the beginning of the import is because that 0.2 ratio for decimation is going to work for the majority of the model, but you can see here on the, the actual like panels, um, it's a little choppier than I'd like. So I can actually just adjust this according to, um, you know, specific parts. So I'm going to change this to something like 0.75 because I want this to look um, especially good. Do this for the rest of the panels here. And also just being mindful of the face count still. So I'm just going to adjust the rest of these panels, but still try to target that 500K um, polygon count. You hear it on the front as well. Do it on the back too. I'm actually just going to go ahead and get rid of it here on the rear as well, just because I think I can still work within that 500K, even if I get rid of that. Uh, maybe I just need to add that again. Take it back. Eight. Takes a little bit of tweaking. Yeah, something like that's good. Okay, perfect. Now we have this model. Um, decimated to under 500,000 polygons. So we can now start preparing this for export. You want to be careful working in Blender specifically because the scene units can mess up your import sometimes. So I'm going to jump over to scene here, open up the panel for units, um, and change the scale to 0 0.001. 
because I know this was modeled in millimeters, so I'm going to match that scale and change the length as well to millimeters. Now, when I go up to item and I click on a panel here, you'll see that the scale is actually correct. It's saying 2200, excuse me, uh, 2,296 millimeters, which is, which is accurate here. Last thing I want to do is check the normals of my model to make sure that everything is facing out. So I can do that by heading over to overlays, clicking on face orientation, and seeing that everything is facing the right direction. In the off chance that your model isn't facing the right way, so for instance, you have some faces that might be looking uh, red instead of blue, it's kind of like going the, the opposite direction. What you can do is highlight the appropriate faces, click Shift N to recalculate the normals until everything is facing the right way. And lastly, once you have all of that set up, go ahead and turn that off, you can prepare this for export. So I'm going to go to File, Export. I'm going to choose, in this case, FBX. And a cool trick is embedding the textures of your model into your export. So I can do that with FBX files by clicking on path mode copy, this little icon to embed the textures. And that's, that's really it. I'm going to go ahead and name this, call this FBX decimated EV truck, save this to my desktop and export that file. Once we've finished decimating the model in Blender, we can grab the exported file and upload it to landing pad. Make note of where you place it, because this is where you'll find it in Headset. As you're seeing here, I like to organize my landing pad with a new folder for each project. That way, I always know where I'm going. When the file is finished uploading, you'll see a preview visible in landing pad. Now we'll move over into the Headset and launch Gravity Sketch VR. We'll start by joining a sketch. Once we're in, we'll go to our menu and then to our Import tab. Here you'll see all of your reference images, videos, and import models. The menu at the bottom switches between cloud files, built-in prefabs, and locally saved items. In this case, we'll navigate through the cloud storage menu to wherever we saved our document. You can use the filters here to search for specific references, whether that's models, images, or videos. Once we locate our import, we can click on our file to load it, then click again to open the precise import window. This will give us a window where we can ensure that the scale, position, and rotation of the model are exactly where we want them. By clicking the check mark, we'll finalize the import and the model will be added to our room. Because we use the FBX file type, the model retains its materials or at least its coloration from Blender. You'll notice that the decimation has effectively lightweighted the model while retaining accuracy of visuals and overall model data. Now we can use it while untethered as a reference with little to no lag, and we can move forward with our design process unhindered by the typical bogging down associated with a large data set.